Hey guys, how's it going? So today I wanted to do more of a just a discussion video, share some opinions, some thoughts uh, on, you know, where the season's at at the moment. Um, hopefully motivate some of you guys and, you know, provide some form of hope for a lot of people who are feeling a little bit bored of the season, feel like they're a bit stagnant. Uh, I think this season, you know, to give a quick recap, uh, started off really, really strong. I think Genuinely, it was one of the most fun seasons that I had ever played. I think a lot of people had ever played as well. Um, almost class agnostic as well. I feel like um, regardless of whether you were like, it felt, felt like kind of everything was OP. I remember Rogue Mage would one shot you, you know, mages in general were insane. Warriors were really strong. Um, you'd see the occasional sort of like demon hunter or, um, you know, weed class that would, you know, hunt you and one shot you. It felt like everything was really, really strong and there was no meta that was necessarily set out. Like obviously there were comps that were stronger than other comps, but it didn't feel like you just versed the same comp nonstop. Um, the other thing was it was pretty easy to level alts. Like I felt like leveling alts only was a pretty good experience with the, um, you know, new questing system they released. You could either do the campaign to quest a bit faster. You could just level through dungeons, a whole bunch of different ways you could do it, which was really, really cool. But um, probably what I felt happened was that as the season went on, um, competitive play, you know, MMR, we, we're going to talk quick, quickly about the MMR thing, um, the upper bound MMR uh, issue in a second. But um, I think the game slowed down a lot. Um, as people had way more gear. Uh, so you had more like sort of the longer games, more of an established meta came uh, through like Turbo and a lot of the Cleaves as well. Uh, I think Condemn Warrior in general uh, isn't necessarily the most uh, thought provoking or, you know, exciting gameplay, um, even for, <laughs> for the person condemning. Um, so I think you, you had these big changes. It was extremely hard to gear and there was not really much motivation to like level alts or play really anything else so the majority of people who took the game pretty seriously you know i think my channel really grew in those in those sort of like glory days of, of shadowlands um i think like december to like maybe early february when when there was a lot of excitement um but at the moment i think we are at that sort of mid-season lull um, it's going to be quite a long patch. I've, I've heard from the tally video. Um, he's saying like July, August, the PTR is still not out yet. And it's April. Honestly, when I was uh, doing videos in January, I actually thought the season would end by, by March. Um, sort of resembling season one of BFA because they'd want to try and get this out before, you know, they lo lost everyone to, to um, TBC. So it's interesting that it's not out yet. Um, not even the PTR. Uh, it feels like the development cycle is really slow and that, you know, devs aren't really listening to what we're saying or what anyone's saying regarding PvP at least. Uh, so coming from that in a positive light, um, I think there's a whole bunch of you guys who I know from Discord, who I talk to you guys for Patreon and stuff like that, who I'm coaching, who are still, you know, motivated and, and you know, interested in pushing rating. And I'm going to talk about a number of things if this is one of your first seasons where you're pushing rating um, that tend to happen, which are good for you. Um, so what, what generally tends to happen mid-season is that a lot of high-rated players, and when I say high-rated, I mean like 2,800 plus, um, tend to kind of fuck around and sit at, you know, rank one range, which is about 2,870. Um, and they'll just chill. Maybe they'll do queues now and then, but they're not going to be playing too seriously. And what's happened this season is that uh, there appears to be some, I think, I don't, I'm not sure if it came in 9.05 or it was there before, um, some sort of upper bound uh, was there on on rating. And I imagine that would have been sitting sort of at that 3300 range um, because people just completely stopped queuing um, outside, of, outside of prime time at sort of that 2800 plus range. So you'd be sitting really, really long queues and sitting really long queues is sort of a nightmare because, you know, high rating, you don't want to have to necessarily sit there and, and think about a loss for, for 10 minutes. You lose a lot of the momentum and realistically, you can't get that many games in if you, if you can only play like, you know, seven or eight in, in a session. So really important to, to have an active player base and, and get people matched up. But 
Um, what was happening for the higher teams, which usually would queue at those times, is I think they were versing a lot of people who were giving them zero rating, um, and that's something that will, like, that tends to change, right? Is they usually get higher rating um, as the season goes on, but uh, for some reason they were getting queued and literally getting no rating for it because of some sort of, I guess, mathematical bound that they put onto the upper echelon of MMR. So uh, regardless of that, um, there is also this this 10 point sort of boost uh, that happens. And this has happened every season. So it's sort of why longer seasons, while not always the case, but longer seasons generally, um, rating becomes a little bit more inflated. So at the start of the season, if it's like a, you know, 20 week season, 30 week season, you might be 2100. Um, and then by the end of the season, uh, even just the natural inflation, uh, you know, 10 points a week, if you were just playing the same MMR, and obviously there's a whole bunch of other changes that happen in the ladder, uh, in the composition of the ladder. So this isn't the best example, um, but you know, you might be about 200, 200 points higher, just purely based on inflation. But that sort of ignores the fact that um, hopefully if you're playing all season, your player skill is improving uh, and you're able to beat more teams, you're able to be more coordinated, et cetera, et cetera and you're able to win more games. So that's one big reason why I think a lot of you guys at 2100, 2K, that feel a bit demotivated now, the season is going to be long. I would highly recommend still trying to push Gladiator if that's your goal for the season, you haven't reached it yet. I think it's still definitely worth a shot because once that inflation kicks in, you're gonna have so much ability to essentially push um, way higher rating and I think another thing, a byproduct of this sort of hard cap on rating, which happened at the upper bounds of rating, right, is that a lot of really high rated players who were sitting rank one range were just making like lower CR alts. You know, I've seen heaps of streams and even myself, I'm super guilty of it, is I've just been playing alts instead of my main because it's more interesting. You, you know, you get instant cues, you get to play whatever you want. Um, but it has meant that there's a whole bunch of really high rated players who, who are playing their main class at like 2400 CR. Um, so it, it does make it way more difficult. When it gets closer to the rank one push, a lot of those players won't be doing that. They'll be either trying to make sure that everyone in their team has 150 wins for rank one, um, or they'll be grinding out you know, the necessary rating because you really have to push it at the end of the season. It's a very competitive season as well in terms of there's a lot of slots, but there's a lot of people who want rank one too. Um, so they'll be doing boosts. They'll be doing um, their mains, trying to get their mains up, all this kind of stuff. So a lot of the really intense competition where you see somebody really, really high rated at, you know, 2400 or 2300 or 2K, um, will be removed and you'll generally verse other players who are 2k so um, big reason to stay motivated and try to keep pushing that rating up because you really can um, get there uh, i would recommend if you feel like you're at a gear sort of standstill to just do just grit your teeth go through the um the rbgs try and do as many rbgs as you can try and get that rating up because it does give you pretty good gear and also like it helps you get the, um, what's it called, rating that you need to, to, to sort of link everything up and start to beat people, right? Um, because sometimes it can be really, really hard to actually lock in any significant increases in your gear um, without something like that. So getting to the point here, um, I think what we're gonna start to see is way less uh, high rated players who are playing super low. I think once the boosting sort of phase ends, which is usually when rank one is sort of closed up, um, you're gonna see or like starts to heat up. You're gonna see way, way more people interested in pushing that. And um, that means that largely some of the boosters will be too busy to actually go and, and compete with you for some of that rating. So guys, try and stay motivated. Even if you just play normally, you do get a general boost in your MMR. And then with more inflation, more stuff kicking in, you'll have much higher chance of getting that rating that you need. Um, my biggest advice is try and take a break mid-season. 
trying to stay motivated in the game. And if you're kind of burnt out, I'm definitely feeling burnt out. I've, I've taken pretty much, you know, about a week off the game. I'm playing seriously and I've, I've just been like fucking around in twos if I'm, if I'm bored. But, um, you know, we, we've been playing Shadowlands like nonstop from like December or November to like now. So um, taking a bit of a break is much is, is like acceptable and expected uh, for for anything. And I think it's still a good expansion. It still has huge potential. I'm really looking forward to seeing what Blizzard does with it. Um, I think something like Solo Queue would be really cool. But in the case it doesn't, I just wouldn't mind easy gearing of alts. And, you know, I wouldn't mind them just removing, you know, boosting for gold. Um, make it TOS against TOS because... I mean, I've done it before and it is a great way to make gold, but, uh, you know, talking to viewers and stuff like that, like there's still going to be people boosting friends and I'm, I always hold friends out in twos. It's just not a big deal for me, but I think the lack of a monetary incentive would remove a lot of the boosting generally. You're never going to be able to police somebody just helping someone out, um, or, you know, people doing viewer twos and stuff like that, but, uh, you can stop people from, I guess, monetizing it i'm not sure if they'll ever do that though because you know mythic boosts and and generally things for gold are fine but uh, i think it would be a good step forward i'd be interested to hear what you guys think hopefully you guys have been enjoying the uh fact that i'm posting way more videos and all and yeah have a good one guys take it easy